Hi, my name is Stephanie Giard, and I'm the Marketing Director here at Geospatial Experts. Thanks for joining us today for this webinar on GeoJot Plus for Facilities Management. The presentation is really just meant to be an overview. The presentation itself and the demo will last about 15 minutes, and then there'll be a short Q&A session. Please feel free to type in questions at any time in the questions section of GoToWebinar. Uh, Tyler McGarity, our technical account manager, will be running the demos and then also at the end leading the Q&A session. I'll be giving the introductory presentation and we've only got 15 minutes, so let's get started. GeoJot Plus is a full solution that takes you from mobile field data collection all the way to reports and integration into your existing system. The GeoJot Plus app turns your staff and volunteers mobile devices into photo-based geospatial data collection tools. Volunteers can upload data via the cloud or staff can transfer via USB port, depending on what you're allowed to do. And then using the GeoJot Plus desktop application, you can create all the output you need to get the data into your various systems like FMSS, ArcGIS, and to create the maps and reports that you need. Since 2001, we here at Geospatial Experts have been the leader in photo-based GIS data collection, starting with our first product, GPS PhotoLink, which many of you are familiar with, and now the GeoJot Plus field data collection system. Here on the screen are just a few examples of the thousands of Geospatial Experts customers worldwide. Many of you from national parks, fish and wildlife, BLM, have been here from the beginning and work with us directly. But we also have resellers that span the globe and some of you work with us through them. So facilities management, we're gonna use the example of national parks here. So NPS manages a variety of facilities across their national parks covering more than 84 million acres. And that's a lot of facilities. Facilities management also affects all DOI agencies as well as many other federal, state, and local government agencies as well as private companies. While a lot of attention is given to the costs associated with construction of these facilities, the initial construction often represents a very small amount of the full cost of ownership during the life of a facility. And the facilities can include a lot of different things. It can include buildings, structures, grounds, utility systems, even trails and signs. And to protect these resources, uh, you need ongoing investments in maintenance repair and revitalization, and uh, you know all of this is considered as part of the long-term maintenance program. Together, these expenditures account for generally about 60 to 85 percent of the total cost of ownership. And at DOI, facilities management, that's the group that provides leadership to ensure the stewardship of the park's constructed assets. In order to plan for the maintenance, operations, repairs, and rehab that needs to be done, uh, the first step is really to document the current condition of the assets. And that is where we come in, GeoJot Plus Facilities. So you can use the GeoJot app to collect solid photographic proof documenting asset conditions at a specific place and time. Along with those photos, you capture extensive data or just a little bit of data, it's up to you, but you can capture up to 80 items per photo. And GeoJot Plus enables facility staff, seasonal staff, interns and volunteers, pretty much anybody to collect solid photographic proof documenting asset conditions. So I'm going to stress this several times during the presentation. I hope I'm not too repetitive, but the GeoJot app is really easy to use. That was really our focus in building the GeoJot app is to make sure that anybody out there in the field can use it. Uh, as I said just a moment ago, even your seasonal staff, interns, volunteers, you know, it's not just for the people who use it every day. It's for the people who, never, who use it once a month or just one project a year. And you can quickly, accurately, and consistently collect all the data that you need. And it's really a new age for inventories. You know, I know that a lot of you have had a bunch of ex years of experience using um, equipment that took quite a bit of training. And with GeoJot Plus running on a smartphone or tablet, I mean, if they can figure out how to take a selfie, they can use GeoJot. And you can, so you can train them in minutes to use it and then have usable data that you can feed into ArcGIS, or FMSS, or create reports. And the GeoJot app will run on uh, I know that a lot of you at DOI agencies are, have been given Apple devices, and it'll run on the iPhones, the iPads, the minis. It'll run on Android devices, including the Garmin Monteras I know some folks have. It'll run on personal phones, Android or Apple. That's no problem. It'll also run on Trimble units, and you can use all these devices whether they're cellularly enabled or not, and you can easily transfer the licenses between units. 
So as I've said, the app is super easy for anybody to use. And then the heavy lifting is really done back in the office, generally by a staff person who is you know, at least somewhat familiar with GIS. First and foremost, the data collected with GeoJot is actually written directly into the original photo. And so the data and the photo can never be separated from each other. But in addition to that, um, they're using the GeoJot Plus desktop processing engine, you can create a host of other outputs. So what I've got up here on the screen, you can create the Esri Geo databases and shapefiles, PDF reports, input for entry into FMSS and SAMS, Google Earth Maps, web output, pretty much everything you need. Now, while, while, this is, while the app is super easy to use, there are some other things to consider. What we've found and what we've heard from your folks out there in the field is that what generally tends to cause more issues is actually the workflows. So before you go out into the field, definitely define your workflow and run through it once, at least, before sending out your teams. Um, sometimes the workflows really need more explanation, and you need to provide really clear instructions, particularly if volunteers are involved. I know that I was talking to one woman at Fish and Wildlife who got back twice as many photos as she was expecting because people were taking photos of signs that she didn't need, like bathroom signs. And so just be sure to make it really clear to folks what, um, what they need to be doing out there. So for um, volunteers and for staff, we have, you can, once you, uh, and Tyler will show you this in just a minute, but you set up your, um, your configuration settings for the phone. And that's things like, um, like the photo size that it takes, uh, accuracy. accuracy, different kind of things like that. And really, you want that to be consistent for all the people collecting data out there. And Tyler will show you how to do this, but you can set up the configuration for a phone, and then um, you can then distribute that configuration to everybody who's doing data collection for you. You can also um, you can also create forms either on the app or using the desktop application and distribute those to everybody, so you have consistent data collection. And last, before you head out into the field, you need to decide how you're going to transfer the data. So we do allow um, cloud delivery of the data from the app uh, back to the desktop processing engine. We know that not everybody is allowed to use that, but available is Google Drive, uh, FTP, and Dropbox. Email is also available. And we found that volunteers actually have more freedom within DOI to use different types of uh, uh, different types of transfer options. So that's something to consider. And then for DOI staff who maybe are not allowed to use that, you can always use the tried and true transfer via USB port. So with that, I am going to turn this over to Tyler for the live demo. All right. Thank you very much, Stephanie. I'm Tyler McGarity. I'm the technical account manager, and I'm going to give you a overview demonstration of GeoJot Plus, uh, some of the features, and how can we be applied for facilities management. Uh, there's a couple levels to facilities management. The one I'm going to start with is one where you already have an asset inventory that has been completed, and you're going to update information via an existing asset ID uh, or location ID. So here you can see I have my form loaded, existing location ID. Uh, I'm getting my lat long, my accuracy, uh, plus or minus 33 feet, which, you know, not great for building a road, but great for uh, taking a picture of a building. And we do support higher accuracy connections to external GPS units. Uh, so if you have external GPS units, existing ones, uh, we can connect to them via Bluetooth so that you can get that higher accuracy signal right into GeoJot. So once I launch the app, um, it's going to take me right to the photo screen. I can snap a picture and it's going to take me right into my form. Uh, in this case, I have an existing photo uh, location ID, uh, which I've entered here. And uh, all I really want to add here is notes. So uh, when I create my output, it can already be associated with a known quantity uh, on the back end, uh, a known ID. And all I really want to update is a picture and some information that goes along with that picture. So in this case, I snap the photo, I say done, and uh, it moves on for me to take my next photo. Now I can keep that same existing location ID and take another photo, or I could change to a different asset ID if I was taking a photo of something more specific. Uh, the photo, now that it's been captured, there you just see it popped up in Dropbox. Uh, it's now on the camera roll. I can go into the camera roll. I can edit any of that data that's been collected uh, on my form. 
I can uh, look at the photo itself. Once again, these forms can be as simple as the one I just used or uh, up to 80 fields long. Uh, I'll show you some more involved forms that you would use if you were doing the asset level collection, uh, if you had a brand new uh, asset that you were collecting in just a second here. Uh, also in the app, we have an overview map you can go to and see what's been collected, uh, what you've done that day or maybe that week. Uh, you can go in, take a look, click on photos. You can see what's been collected. I can click that photo, it would take me to the camera roll. I can look at the form associated with it. Uh, I can also do a navigate to here. So if I had a photo in there and I wanted to get back to that same photo, I could navigate myself to it if I needed to. And then Stephanie mentioned uh, the forms and the settings sharing. Uh, so within the app here, once I have this set how I want, I want you know a certain photo size. I want to set up my file renaming in the field. Uh, once I get all of that stuff set exactly how I want, uh, accuracy can be set in here. GPS settings, whether I'm using meters or feet, true north, magnetic north. I can come in here then and share those settings. And when I do that, I can share it to a cloud service or I can just email it to somebody. Now, this allows you to set up a settings file. You can email it out to uh, a whole group of volunteers or coworkers and make sure that everyone is using the exact same settings so that you have data consistency when it comes back into you uh, on the back end. Same deal with the forms. Um, forms can be created on the desktop software or out in the field. Uh, a little bit easier on the desktop software uh, to create a form and bring in existing information. Uh, but once you have the forms, the phone uh, or mobile device can have as many or as few forms as you'd like. Uh, these forms, if you've created or modified something in the field and you wanted to send it to somebody, you can hold down on it and then uh, you can share that form too. You could email it to a coworker that maybe didn't have the same forms you did. Uh, or when you're back in the office and you create a form, there's also a methodology for emailing it directly out of our software to all of your field users. You can send it out to a listserv or, or an individual, anybody you want. Now, once that data has been collected and it goes back into the desktop software, I will show you GeoJock Core here, which is the desktop portion of the software. Uh, those of you that have used GPS Photo Link are familiar with the uh, appearance here. So you have an import photos tab. This is where you've brought in your pictures. This allows you to uh, see your overall project that you've created. Uh, you can come in here and look at the overview map. You can see data that was collected with individual pictures and you can modify and edit data as needed. You can edit photos, so you can come in here and do cropping, uh, and you can do your watermarking here. Uh, when you're gonna create an output that you want to go up into something like the MPS focus system, uh, you can create your watermarks right here. And then when you set up your output, you can put in your persistent URL here right on the for, uh, photo information tab. So in this case, uh, I have a persistent URL in here. It's gonna create that field within the table. Uh, and then that information, when the photo's pushed up, the table that can be integrated in the backend system will have a direct link to where the actual uh, photo location is. So it gives you an ability there to uh, have all of your data stay correlated at all times. We also support uh, several other kinds of outputs. Um, you can do the ArcGIS output, geodatabase or shapefile. We're an Esri partner, so you can see our toolbar here. That allows you to bring one of our shapefiles or open up a geodatabase created in GeoJot. You can hover over points and see the actual photos pop up of what the assets are that have been collected there. Uh, we also support doing uh, the standard PDF reports. So here you can see an overview map. This could be an MXD file or an MPK file off of your existing ARC server. Uh, it could also be a map published to a REST service. So if it's something that's uh, organization-wide, you can put in a REST address and you can use that as your background or overview maps there. Uh, Google Earth output. So uh, this is a good deliverable for the public or for people that don't necessarily have GIS systems. Uh, you can go and once again, create a KML or KMZ file, see the information that was collected, see the overview photo, uh, and that's a, a nice package that can be sent off. Uh, and then the CSV file here, this is uh, just a representation of the flat table that we create. So this is the same table that's in the DBF file of the shape or uh, the MDB file that can be created. 
and uh, it has the information that you collected, the notes that you added, as well as uh, you know your file name and whatever unique identifier uh, you're using there. So here, there's a location ID. And like I said, this would be an example of ones where you had existing location IDs that you were using out in the field. If you have new assets and you want to create, I told you I'd go into that and I will briefly. Uh, first thing you would do would be create forms. So you can create forms. This is a, from FMSS. You could go in and say, oh, I'm going to a building and I want to do all the assets in there. This is an HVAC boiler form. So you know the information that you need to collect. You can export this uh, as a, a Excel file, bring it into our form creator and create yourself a list of forms like the ones I will show you here. So here uh, are a bunch of forms that were created inside of, uh, of GeoJot, and this allows you to go out there. You can lock your location at the outside of a building. You can go in. You can take pictures of the different things that you are asset inventorying. Then fill out the forms that go along with them, and you have all of that information uh, associated with them. Then you can take it into core, uh, when you do take it into core, you can then uh, uh, run it through core. And when you do that, you can uh, create a unique ID for FMSS uh, by creating your core output and then integrating it into the FMSS system, which will allow you to create a unique ID as well as like a work order number. And then that information can be uh, added to the existing Excel file you created. And then you can re-tag those photos in core. This is a little bit more of a complicated workflow, uh, but it is something that we have several users doing, especially in the park service. So if you want more information about that and samples of some of these forms, contact me. Uh, I can tell you how to set that up and how you can re-tag the photos so that when you're collecting new assets, you can have all of that information associated to a location or asset ID in your backend system and how you can output then all the photos to a location that's also associated in that backend system. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass back over to Stephanie. All right, thank you, Tyler. So we are here today because we don't want you guys to take the time to reinvent the wheel. We have a lot of people who are at National Park Service, you know, other people at Fish and Wildlife who we know are all doing the same exact task. I mean, slightly different, but essentially the same task. And we don't want everyone to take the time to figure it out themselves. So here's what you should do next. If you are with National Park Service, please contact Brian Deathorn and get the serial number for GeoJot Plus. You guys actually have 100 licenses available to NPS staff, seasonal workers, and volunteers. So go ahead and contact Brian. He's also the facilities person. So that works out really nicely. Uh, if you have somebody else in your office who has a license, go ahead and borrow it and try it out. If you don't have any access to a license, then go ahead and go to our website and download a free trial. While you're signing up for the free trial, if you're working with a reseller, you know, such as someone like Compass Tools, that's where you can specify that you're working, from, working with them when you sign up. Uh, also, go ahead and check out the general use cases on our website. And as Tyler said, we have forms, templates, we have detailed workflow documents for facilities. So please contact Tyler to get those. Just ask. We couldn't get through everything in 15 minutes. We will also send you a link to this recorded webinar so you can watch it again, particularly the live demo. And then by all means, if you're borrowing or you're trying out a GeoJot license, go ahead and purchase it. We are talking to Market DOI about a DOI-wide license, but we need more large groups of users to justify that. And in the meantime, uh, for just $296 license GSA, it's super easy to purchase one to five licenses on a credit card. We know that everybody out there has a, a lot of work to do, and this will save, save you a bunch of time in the field and also back in the office. And you can actually get going with your facilities inventory. So once again, last but not least, we're circling around to Tyler, and the buck really stops with Mr. Tyler McGarity. So please contact him for the forms, the templates, and the detailed workflow documents. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get the Q&A session started. <laughs> 